Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Aaron of spacefood.ca, Space Food Music. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can replace the bass sh shakers in your Subpack M2. I love my Subpack. I've been using it for uh, over three years now, and it's definitely one of the, the best investments that I've made in my home studio. And for touring while I'm working on music on the go, it's, it really is the best way to monitor sub frequencies um, without, a treated, without a treated room. Um, unfortunately, I drove mine a little bit too hard for too long and one of the bass shakers is totally non-responsive. The other one is starting to create some audible noise, which means it's on its way out. So um, with the, the delays for the new sub pack, um, which I'm really hoping to get my hands on once they start shipping, um, I figured that there are a few other people in my same situation where, you know, maybe you've got an M2 that's broken that you want to fix for cheap while you wait for the new sub pack to come out. Um, or maybe you just love your M2 and you're not interested in buying a new one, but you want a cheap way to fix your sub pack. So did a little bit of research online and I found that you can use these Dyne Audio uh, transducers to repair your sub pack. Um, these are really amazing because actually they only cost about $14 US each and um, now that I know that I'm going to be putting these in basically everything. I'll put them in my car, I'll put them in my couch and um, these are just going to be an awesome alternative to putting in a really expensive sub uh, subsystem in uh, my home studio or in my, uh, in my vehicle. So I'm going to take you through the process. I haven't done this yet, but I've got all the pieces that I need. We're going to open up the sub pack and I'll show you how you can replace these pieces and uh, we'll go from there. So first off, I want to show you the noise that my sub pack is making and um, kind of give you an idea of what you can expect once your sub pack is starting to give you some problems. And then we'll go ahead and open it up and uh, proceed with uh, fixing it. So. Um, let's just get this going here and I'll get a song or two queued up with this. So you hear how it's, it's got kind of a farty sound. It's quite buzzy and um, you won't be able to tell this, but there are actually two shakers in this. There's one on the bottom and one on the top. And the one on the bottom is not responding whatsoever. And then, yeah, of course, this one has a horrible sound, which, yeah, not so good. So uh, now that we've checked that out, um, I'm just going to turn this off and we'll proceed with opening it up and getting these new um, shakers in there. Um, okay, so um, on the side of this, they've actually done a really good job of making the the, the case. Actually, I shouldn't say actually done a good job. Subpack is a really awesome company. They are really forward thinking and they make some great products. And um, so underneath there's this little flap here. Uh, it's just an elastic band. They've done a pretty good job of disguising, camouflaging the end of the zipper. But if you just pull this elastic out and there's a little zipper in there that you can use your fingernail to grab or if um, it's a little hard for you, you could use a paper clip or um, something else in order to unzip this. And so I'm just gonna pull this open and that's gonna expose the the insides of this sub pack and um, it'll give you a good idea of what it looks like and and what you can expect when you open up your own sub pack. So the zipper goes all the way around, which is pretty cool. And let's stop right there and we'll open this up here. So there's this plastic piece. This is what kind of comes in contact with your back. And I'm going to just pull that out and you'll see that there are cables on here. There we go. There's a little clip that this whole unit is attached to. The foam is just to dampen a little bit of the vibration on the back and help uh, reduce the amount of vibration and noise that you actually hear from the unit. Um, and when you open it up, when you open it up here, you'll see there's a sub packer here, or um, a sub 
shaker here. And there's also a sub shaker here too. So the first thing I'm going to do is just disconnect this little clasp. And that'll give me a little bit more control um, while I'm pulling this apart. I'm also going to test these transducers before I actually like really start tearing this apart. Um, let me show you what this looks like. So this is the sub pack unit. Um, I wasn't able to find any information about the ohmage, but uh, I'm thinking that this is an eight ohm shaker. Um, and that is what I purchased. So this again is from Dayton Audio and it's a puck tactile transducer. I'll put a link to where you can buy this in the description uh, along with anything else that I'm using to do this repair. But let's just have a close look at what this, what this looks like here. Um, the package is pretty nice. The shipping was really quick. Um, I got this from Parts Express and they, they shipped really, really fast and uh, got it to me pretty quick. So um, it looks very similar to the one in the actual sub pack. It's a little bit bigger, um, but not by much. It also comes with um, a little bracket that you can use. Like for example, if you were to mount this into the seats of your car or uh, like I'm gonna do in the uh, underside of your couch, then you get this nice ring piece that the sub shaker fits inside and then you can just mount it there. Uh, okay, so that's, that's what the sub shaker looks like when you get it. We're going to start by removing the shakers from the actual plastic piece. And then we'll go from there. So there's some tape here. And this is how this is all wired up. Let's see if I can pull this up a little bit better. snippers here and I'm just going to make note of where the cables are coming in because um, actually it would be nice if I could preserve most of this so I think I'm just going to snip it up here and then that'll give me a lot of space uh, for when I attach the new one when I solder it together yeah, let's just go with that. All right, so I'm gonna snip this first one here. And of course be careful when you're cutting and all that jazz. I should get a little wire uh, stripper, but eh, I'm a little lazy. Okay. And of course, if you find value from this and you are enjoying the video so far, um, I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel. I'm making a point to pump up my channel a little bit. I've got some new content that I'm, I'll be putting out soon for the M8 tracker and a few other pieces of gear um, and a few other repairs that I'll be doing as well. So uh, if you are into that sort of thing, then um, uh, definitely subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Okay, so I'm going to put the black one on here. I'm just going to test it first uh, just to make sure that this Dayton Audio uh, shaker works right out of the box. I'm sure it does. And then I'll go ahead and um, start with stripping out the old shakers. So I'm just twisting the cable as you can see. And now I'll grab the chassis with the battery and the amp. I'll plug it back in here. Mm -hmm. 
and turn it on. Let's see if we have any joy. Oh yeah, we have life. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh yeah, that's great. Yeah, it sounds, sounds great. It's really shaken. This is gonna work perfectly. Oh yeah, great, I'm excited. Let's go ahead and um, strip the other one out and then uh, get to the soldering and gluing. There's a bit of a process here because we have to scrape the, the old one off because it's just glued. And um, yeah, so it's gonna be a bit of a pain, but we'll make it happen. All right, let's take this, turn that off, take this clip off. Go for it. Okay. So, I'm just gonna pull. I've got some contact cement. I'm gonna be cementing this down pretty liberally. So, I'm not too worried about this. Set that aside for now. And this is what it looks like on its own. There's kind of like a rubbery piece there to just kind of keep things uh, from vibrating too much, this plastic. Um, so now I just have to try to get this off of there without causing too much, too much damage. So I'm going to use this wood chisel and just try to Slowly pull this thing off. You know, even though you can buy these base shakers for pretty cheap on Dayton Audio or on uh, Parts Express or wherever, um, you know, the joy of the sub pack is the fact that it's got that low latency uh, Bluetooth capability. Um, the newer one, I believe, is even lower latency and lower noise. Because uh, I know with with this version of the of the unit, it's um, kind of noisy at first. Um, you know, especially if you're plugged in with your headphones. But but I'm uh, yeah, pretty excited for the the new one to come out. This is really glued on there. You're gonna need to kind of work at it a bit. But nothing a little Gorilla Glue or rubber cement won't fix up when we're putting the new one on. All right. We're making progress here. Actually, it's, I mean, it feels like sacrilege <laughs> to be doing this because you know these things aren't cheap but also you know it's no use to me if it's not working so I might even mount one of these base shakers in my studio seat who knows it's just such a nice nice thing to have There's the first one. Again, very similar. About the same size. The subpack one is a little bit bigger, but this one, they're about the same weight too, so I'm not concerned about, you know, one being better than the other. I think they're both gonna be perfect, so. 
and that was just glued right onto the foam. So I think I might just clean this up a little bit and then, and then do the same. I might just put a heavy layer of contact cement on there and glue it right down. That's gonna be perfect. And I'll point that in that direction there. Nice. Okay, let's do the next one. And then we're off to the races. There's a better way to do this, maybe something a little bit less intrusive. Hopefully I don't cut myself. So the reason why, if you haven't already um, learned about this, but if the reason why subpack is so effective at transmitting the subfrequencies to you accurately is that the vibrations are being transduced right into your body, and the uh, the basically you're not re um, relying on some subwoofer to pressurize the air inside of a room. And just like a slide whistle, where you make the chamber of air longer and it lowers the pitch, the same sort of thing happens inside of your room when you're pressurizing that air. And so depending on the length and width of, and height and the combination of those dimensions, um, you'll actually get little peaks in bass frequencies and also nulls in bass frequencies. So areas of your room where it might sound loud and super bassy and other areas of your room where it doesn't feel bassy at all. Some of you might have experienced this before and, you know, maybe uh, been frustrated with it. But the thing about sub frequencies is you can't really hear sub frequencies with your eardrums. It's a um, your body needs to shake. Your body actually needs to feel that rumble. And so the sub pack just skips the step of pressurizing the air inside of your room. And it just transduces, it just transfers those vibrations right into your body. And, um, and so then you can get an, a, a really accurate um, idea of what the sub frequencies in your mix and in your music um, are doing without any of the unnatural coloring that your room, your listening environment uh, creates um, uh, for your music. So this is definitely the best thing. Like also, you know, 500 bucks, 600 bucks for a sub pack, it's definitely way cheaper than completely redoing your room and creating bass traps and adjusting the, the size and dimensions of your space. It's it's just such a brilliant tool and um, I'm just so happy to have this. Um, okay, so I've got um, this all cleaned off. I'm not gonna, I don't think I'm gonna clean that part off too much because I'm just gonna glue the heck out of it. Maybe I'll clean it up a little bit more. I do want it to sit flush on there, so. And the contact cement I think is gonna do a really good job. Again, if you uh, are enjoying this, if this is useful to you, I'd love it if you'd subscribe to my channel. I've got um, some weird stuff posted on it and some more <laughs> kind of music related uh, topics I'll be discussing coming up, especially with the new uh, Dirty Wave M8 tracker. If you know what I'm talking about, you'll probably get stoked. If you don't, then maybe you should subscribe anyway and just uh, find out what exactly I'm talking about. Okay, next step, I am going to get my soldering iron out and we'll solder these wires in. 
and then we're almost done. This is not taking very long at all. Okay. So I think this is actually glued on there with tape, just some sort of like a double-sided tape. Um, so if you were to use some double-sided tape, like a Gorilla Glue tape or something like that, you would probably get the same um, uh, or better um, results than the contact cement. Maybe, maybe not actually. I don't know, I think maybe they'd be equal, but we'll find out. All right. Almost done. Be really careful, of course, while you're slicing with a, any type of blade. Don't want any damage to you guys and gals and otherwise. Okay, here we go. So, um, one thing to be aware of too is these come with um, little covers on them. And I'm just going to take those covers off because I'm going to glue them this way because it looks like there's some vents there. And uh, on the original, um, the vent had some space to move. Oh, this is actually the transducer. Like you can actually push it in and out here. I don't want to block those too much because uh, this has to push air out. So let's take this little protective piece of plastic off. All right, here we go. Dayton Audio. Cool. Again, these are eight ohm transducers and I have put the link down in the description for you if you want to buy them uh, from wherever I bought them from uh, Parts Express. But if you have another uh, electronics provider that you prefer, then uh, I recommend purchasing them from there. Okay, I've got this. The transducer. Let's just get this garbage out of here. And I'll take the protective coating off of this one. Mm, that's satisfying. Okay. Cool. Actually, I'm going to glue these first and then we'll solder them. So, if you've never used contact cement before, Put a generous coat on both sides of what you're gluing. Then you just let it dry a little bit. The glue will get kind of a murky color. I mean, you won't be able to tell too much because the we're gluing onto black here, but, but uh, once it's kind of dried a little bit, then it'll become really, really sticky to itself. And so we're just gonna really layer this on here because I don't want these shakers to come off while I'm wearing them, while I'm wearing the pack. I'd like to just do this one more time, you know, just this once while I'm waiting for the new sub pack to come out. Um, also, just, you know, recommended to do this in a well-ventilated space because uh, it stinks really bad and it's very poisonous and flammable and
All right, now we just let that dry a bit. And once it's all dry, we can mount it in there. Um, and in the meantime, I'm going to grab my soldering iron. We'll get that warmed up. If you don't know how to solder, of course, you can just um, um, twist these onto the little harness and then and then glue them in uh, or tape them. But um, I'm going to use some uh, shrink wrap, hopefully, if I have enough. Uh, looks like I do. And I'm just going to, I don't know, I'm just going to try to make it as nice as I possibly can. Then hopefully I won't have to open it up again and, and fix it. I don't know if I'm going to need a solder sucker, but it should be good. In the meantime, I may as well clip this. Like that. Okay. Black to black, white to white. So in this case, it'll be black to black, white to red. I need a few of these. I wonder if I have enough. I probably have enough. I'll just do, I guess I don't really need to do that yet. Still waiting for this to dry. A little kind of hazy. Let's just go for it. So. Yeah, that's good. So this will stick nicely to this. So I'm going to put this in here so that the wire is pointed toward the middle of the chassis. I'm just calling this thing the chassis. Not sure if that's the lingo. And here we go. Put it in there and press it down. And, oh yeah, that's already sticking on there really nice. And I'll do the same with this one. Wires pointing in. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's gonna work perfectly, I think. Okay. So, let's do a little prep here. I do need to see if this foam, if you remember the, this goes over the, the shakers and the wires go inside of these little slots here. And of course, these shakers are bigger than the subpack ones. So I'm gonna try to be sneaky and tuck the, Tuck these little flaps into the flaps of the foam so that it'll have a nice fit. Let's see. 
<laughs> yeah, actually that's, <laughs> that's gonna work nice. Might even work a little nicer than those other ones. All right, let's put this last one on there. These shakers come with a pretty nice length of cable coming off of them and it's comfortable to work with. Okay, let's throw that on there. Tuck it in like so. Boom. Wow, that is, that is working so nicely. Now, as long as I don't accidentally burn myself or the foam, we'll be in business. I need to cut four pieces of this heat shrink because I want to be able to solder it and then heat shrink it down so it's nice and tidy looking. Um, is that going to be too short if I cut that? Let's see. I could probably get three pieces out of that one. Let's just go for it. YOLO. Nice. Okay. One, two, three, four. I'm okay to leave that one a little longer. Okay. So black and black and red and white. So we'll go like this. So um, I used to twist them like this, uh, but then you're kind of left with a weird bend there. So an uh, old friend from high school taught me to like roll it kind of like this. You kind of make an X with it. Not sure if you can see that. And then you just kind of twist it like so. And then it's kind of a little straight, a little straighter. Okay, let's see if this is gonna work. So I'm gonna grab this. This is soldering wire with flux. Then I don't have to yeah, then it's just so much easier. And we'll see if this is, oh yeah. Not bad. I find the trick with soldering is to like, put the soldering iron or the heat like on the other side of the wire and then it'll kind of draw the, the soldering, the, the solder to the heat. And uh, that oh, just makes it so much easier, uh, kind of knowing that. Okay, let's try this one here. So far this is moving along quite smoothly, knock on wood. that the same way and repeat the process. Nice. Two more to go. White and red, black and black. It's a little tight, but whatever. Yeah, 
Looks good. One more to go. Then we can heat shrink these bad boys. All right, almost. As long as it holds long enough that I can solder it. Nice. That's it for the soldering iron. I'll just unplug that so I don't burn myself. And we should actually test this before I go any further. So I'm going to grab the amp again. I'm gonna shift this over. Look it in there. Oh, works like a charm. Confirmed both of them work. Okay, that is awesome. Next step, I'm just gonna heat shrink these and put it all back together and that'll be a job well done. Hopefully, hopefully well done. And hopefully this will be super useful to you and it'll sh kind of show you how easy it is actually to um, just repair your, your Subpack M2X while you're waiting for the new one to come out. Just have my lighter here. And I'm just gonna run the heat over this. That will shrink it. Nice. And then I'll do this one. Kind of put the solder in the middle of the heat shrink. I'd say this stuff is just so nice to have in your soldering kit. Um, you know, because electrical tape is great and all, but um, it tends to get kind of sticky. And like if there's high temperatures, then the adhesive kind of comes off and just sort of slides around. And I don't know, just kind of makes a mess. Um, and since this thing's going to be on my back and kind of generating heat, I just, you know, having the heat shrink on there, it's just nice. And look at how nice it looks. It looks super pro. Okay. So now I'm just going to twist this down, reuse the piece of tape that is in here. Blomp, blomp, blomp. And I'm gonna slide this guy out here. I think that's where that belongs. Let's put this thing back into its case. So where were we? This is here and this. This, the battery pack is what sits in there. That makes sense. Okay, so I'm just gonna slide this in here. That battery pack should sit nicely, nicely in. Hopefully this is the right direction. <laughs> oh yeah, it definitely is, definitely. Okay, yeah, let's plug this guy in here, tuck it under. And I just really wanna make sure that the 
battery is sitting in the right spot. Feels like it is. Yeah, it feels like it's all lined up, tucked into that spot with the cables in the middle there. And now we'll zip this guy up. tell that I've been opening it. Okay, let's let's test it out one last time before signing off. Um, again, if you found this valuable, I really uh, encourage you to follow my page. Uh, just, you know, subscribe and follow my content. Um, and um, either than that, I appreciate you stopping by and checking this video out. <laughs> Good as new. Both of the shakers are working. It's great. So that is how you fix your Subpack M2X base shakers. Hope you enjoyed this. Again, subscribe, check out my other content, and I will see you later.